This is a Raspberry Pi single board computer. It's literally the size of a credit card, and the cheapest model is about $15. But believe it or not, we can actually install a software on it called Pi-Hole and configure it to become a DNS sinkhole and literally block all the ads on your entire network, which means your phone, your computer, your TV, just so it's connected to your internet, ads will be blocked. Not only that, but it will actually speed up your internet at the same time. So today, I'm gonna show you how to set it all up. Now before I show you how to set this all up, I think you should know how it works first. So basically, every time you um, open a website on your computer, let's say google.com, your computer asks the router to give it google.com. But the thing is, the router doesn't know what google.com is. So it asks what's called a DNS, and basically the DNS has a list of all the websites in the world and IP addresses for those websites. Basically, the IP address is just like the phone number of the server that serves that website. So basically, your router will ask the DNS where google.com is, and then the DNS will return IP address, and then your router can connect to that server and send you google.com. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to create what's called a DNS sinkhole, which basically, instead of the router going straight to the DNS and asking it where google.com is, first, it'll go through a DNS sinkhole. DNS sinkhole will check if it's on a block list. If it's not a block list, it'll just send it'll just send your request straight to the DNS server and the DNS server will send it back to your router. If it is on a block list, it'll actually return nothing to the router. It'll just return 000. And so basically what we're going to be doing is creating a DNS sinkhole and on the block list we just have all the ads. So every time your router tries to serve you an ad, um, it'll go through a DNS sinkhole first. If it's on the DNS sinkhole's block list, it'll just return nothing. All right, so this is cool and all, but what do you need? Well, you really don't need much. You need a Raspberry Pi single board computer. Um, cheapest one's like 15 bucks. And you're also gonna need a micro SD card and a micro SD card reader. I'll have links to all this stuff in the description. And then you also need a power supply for your Raspberry Pi. Now, I have this one, it came with my Pi, but I think you can just use a micro USB cable, but I'm not certain, so look it up. The first step is to put an operating system on this Raspberry Pi so it can actually run stuff, you know, like Linux or Windows or Mac, those are all operating systems. So we're gonna be putting Linux on this thing. So these little Raspberry Pi computers are pretty interesting because they actually don't have a hard drive or an SSD. Instead, they just have an SD card that you stick into it. So, first step is actually to take the SD card out, put it in your reader, and plug it into your computer. Oh gosh. All right, now that's plugged into the computer, you're gonna wanna go to raspberrypi.com. And down here you're gonna want, and over here you're gonna wanna go up to software, and then you're gonna wanna go to the Raspberry Pi imager and download it for whatever operating system you have. And there, it's hot in here. Recording my shed. I have a fan going in the background. Hopefully you can't hear it. And it's done. So now you're gonna click on it and install the file that we just downloaded. Type hit yes. Click install. Give it a second. Click finished. And now it should pop up a screen that looks something like this. So over here where it says choose device, you're gonna wanna pick the Raspberry Pi that you have. Um, I have the Raspberry Pi 3. And then over here where it says choose OS, we're gonna click on it. And we're gonna go down to Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. And then click on that. And then over here in choose storage, you're gonna select the SD card that you just plugged into your computer. Make sure you get the right one because it will delete literally everything on the card and then just click next. Now we're gonna go over to edit settings. You're gonna put in your username, your password. Um, just leave this up here the way it is. Um, and then over here where it says SSID, 
you're going to put in the name of your internet network. That way the Raspberry Pi can automatically connect to it. Then also put in the password. I'll have this all blurred out probably, but yeah. And then over here in wireless LAN country, you're gonna wanna set it to US. And then go up to services and make sure that enable SSH is ticked. And click save, and then yes, and then yes, and then boom, it'll just take a minute. It's writing the operating system to the drive. And um, yeah, just take a minute. All right, once it's done, you should see a screen that looks something like this. Just press continue. And then you can go ahead and remove the SD card from your computer and just pop it in your Raspberry Pi, just like that. And then now you're gonna take your Pi's power supply and plug it in and turn it on. Let's see, there we go, and it's on. All right, now give it a minute or two to boot up. All right, once it's booted up, go over into your, uh, uh, open your command terminal on, or your command prompt on Windows and type in SSH, your username that you just created, at Raspberry Pi. And basically what this does is it allows us to remotely connect to the Raspberry Pi from our computer without actually having to plug a monitor and keyboard and mouse and all that crap into it. But if this isn't working for you or you'd rather not set it up, then you can just plug a keyboard and mouse and monitor and whatever into it. All right, so type that in, press enter. All right, then it's gonna warn you about the authenticity of this host or whatever. Just type yes and put in your password. And then boom. All right, now we are remotely connected to our Pi and the first thing we're gonna wanna do is type in sudo apt-git update. And this will just make sure our Raspberry Pi is update so it doesn't have any problems when we install stuff and whatever. It'll just take a minute. Now we can move on to actually installing the software that turns us into a DNS. So basically we're gonna be installing a free software um, called Pi-hole, which will turn this Raspberry Pi into a DNS server. And all it takes is one command to install. All these commands are in the description to copy and paste, and it's just one command to install Pi-hole. So just paste it in, hit enter, and wait. All right, and once it's done, you should see a screen that looks something like this. Just hit enter, enter, and go over to continue and hit enter. And then if you're connected to the Wi-Fi, if your Pi is connected to your router by Wi-Fi, you're gonna wanna select WLAN 0, which is just the one you should select for most of you. But if you're using Ethernet, you will wanna select ETH 0. So I'm just gonna use WLAN 0. And then you can select the DNS that it, um, it you can select the DNS that our DNS uses. I'm just gonna use Google. And then hit yes, 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 yes. And then show everything. And boom, just give it a second. It'll just take a minute. All right, and once that's done, you should see a screen that looks like this. Hit okay. And the installation is complete. So now we can um, go and click on this link right up here. And that will take us to the Pi-hole login page. Now, it gave us a password, but it was a really complicated one that nobody remembers, so let's change it. So type in Pi-hole, negative A, or dash A, dash P, I always think of it as negative, and then just put in the password you want. I'll put in my password. All right, now we have the new password set and just put in the password you just set in the Pi Hole website, and boom, we are, I'm gonna save it, we're now in Pi Hole. Now we can start blocking things. So now that we have it all set up and installed on our Raspberry Pi, 
we need to actually set up our computer or our router to use this DNS instead of the one it usually uses. So you're going to go to your Raspberry Pi and you're going to type in if config. Now down here where it says inet, it'll give you an IP address. So you can set this up on your router and block everything on your network, but if you don't want to do that, I'm first just going to show you the easy way, which is just to go over in your network settings, and then down here to DNS server assignment, click edit, automatic, and set it to manual, IPv4, preferred DNS, and then set it to the IP, and then click save. And now, if we go restart our, oh, it's already working. And you can see this, this had ads a minute ago. Um, I'll show a clip. It's already, it's already blocking them. Oh, except that one. That must not be in the block list. But now you can see, if we go over in the query log, actually, I should probably blur that out. <laughs> now you can see we, our computer has um, done a total of 109 queries and 65 have been blocked. Now you might want to set this up on your router though so you don't have to go to your TV, your computer, your phone and everything and set the DNS manually in there. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So first you need to get to your router setup page. It's 192.168.1.1. That is always the IP of your router. So you just put that in and it'll take you to your setup page. And then you're going to need your you need to know the username and password for your router. Mine's already saved. And I'm going to sign in. And now every router is a little bit different, so it might be a little bit different for you. I'm using a Netgear router, so for those of you using a Netgear router, it'll be nice and easy. All right, once you sign in and it loads, go over to Internet. Okay, now down here where it says Domain Name Server DNS Address, you're going to want to select use these DNS servers and then put in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Oh, 168. Dot. And now, if you click apply, all the ads should be blocked on your network, even if you don't have it set in your computer. Um, so I'm going to set it back to automatic, so I'll just use the router's DNS. And it'll just, it'll take a second for it to update the settings on your router. All right, and it's finished loading. And now you can see if we go to our Pancake website, no ads. And we don't even have it set in our computer anymore. I undid that. Oh, except this ad. This ad must not be in our block list. So that's pretty much it for the Pi Hole project. It's really not that hard to set up. If you've done it before, it'll take you like 10 minutes. If you haven't done it before, might take you like closer to an hour, hour and a half, I don't know. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and drop a comment down below if it didn't work.